Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. What I'd like to do in this session is show you how to create a family tree using Microsoft Visio shapes, custom shapes, and how to add shape data into those custom shapes. So as you can see on the screen, I've created a very small part of my family tree, just going back to my um, great grandparents. Now, I want to recreate this for you starting from scratch because I haven't used the normal stencil shapes that you would get with an organizational chart and I'll tell you for why in a second. I've used a rectangle shape and then I've typed in that and I've also added in the back of that some, some shape data. So if I just um, show you the shape data. So on each shape I've got some formatted shape data, just the name, date of birth and things like that. There is an issue with the date of birth field which I'll talk about shortly. So I just want to recreate this. Now, starting from scratch, if I just get myself a, a new stencil. Um, let's get rid of that one. Put that one. Just do a new one, file new. First time uh, I don't want to use it from any other file, so I'll just get a blank piece of paper. I'm just going to put the grids on so I can see what I'm doing. I don't need the size and position on. So what normally happens is um, you would naturally go to these preset shapes and maybe bring a position on, um, or you might start at the top. If that's yourself, you're going to start at the top and then bring a position on, and it automatically snaps into place for you is quite easy you can you can sort these out and then keep bringing positions on each of these it comes out underneath you can push these out side by side uh, you can see the um, the lines are going all over the place at the minute which you'd have to sort out now the issue you have with this is on the shape data this is a pre-formatted shape data and the whole idea and what you used to do it be able to do in older versions of Visio is you could tailor this and add it to your stencil and it would remain there but what seems to be happening in this version which is slightly irritating if I go into this and define shape data and if I get rid of all these so if I just delete these off and then just do some of my own so I'll just do name just show you a couple call it name again a string do a new and then date to birth I'll have to leave that as a string as well because the reason you need to leave it as a string is because there's a restriction on the dates um, when you select date if I click on date it's okay as long as uh, you don't go into the 1900s which is probably pretty pointless for a, a family tree so leave that as text now if I click OK that shows you that there's some data there. So I've put my name, Steve Saxton, date of birth, 2108.57. And it should let me do that. So there's the old one. Where was I? That one, that one. So this one, if I just break this link, is one that I've modified. So now if I go into my stencils that I've already created, so open my stencils, Genealogy Basic, um, and then move the one that I've edited into there, and just drop it in, um, call it Test, so I can delete it afterwards. So when I pull that back across, it's added all the default fields in again which still got mine customized so in the previous versions of Visio that would have just left these so that was a really useful thing to do so now this is slightly irritating that it hasn't done that for me so what I've done in this example to create the organizational chart is I haven't used these at all I basically um, created a rectangle drew a rectangle on the screen and added some shape data to that I simply went right click data define shape data 
and then name call it name string new um, date of birth date of birth new death death and whatever fields you want you can just add those if I just click OK to that for now name date of birth death yeah okay now I can type in there and it will remain in there and I then can use this as a report and create report in Excel and so on so if I type my name on this one I'll do it properly so my mum just take the uh, pointer so my mother won't complain so Stephen Saxton and then I can go I can put this data on here as well born um, 1957 I haven't died yet so I'll just create that like that so there's your first shape now if I add this shape into my stencil now even though it's got that stuff on there I can call this level 1a because I've already got a level 1 and then when I drag that on the screen it doesn't pick up any of the shape data information because there wasn't any for it to pick up now hasn't remembered what I had there because it's once it goes into the stencil it's like a new shape but I've already created I'll just delete that one for a minute so I've already created um, a level one so I've got a three shapes together there so what I've done on this one is added a little bit more information there which I probably should tailor because the date of birth is gonna have to be a text screen I think it's a date there but what I did with these I basically brought three shapes together um, just delete that one for a minute um, let's just see what I did I did that and then I worked out sort of how far away I want a shape and just copied that and then did it the other way now it, the video is quite cool for giving you the little guides so that's me and then I can double click on this and that's to say my dad so get rid of that so that would be Kenneth and he was not born then he was born in 1935 and he did die died in 2000, 2011 my mother was Dorothy Greenwood And she was born in 1935 as well. She's still alive. So rather than typing it out like that, before I typed all the information in, I, I actually grouped the shapes. So if I just delete that one for a second. So these are not lined up properly. So if I just push this into the middle a little bit so you can see what I did. And then position these, these shapes. Now what, what I haven't got on these shapes are connection points. So you need to put connecting points on there because there's no way this is going to connect up otherwise. So connecting points is these little things. So I'll click on that and I'll sit on the end and I hold my control key down and it'll let me position that and you've got to be quite careful here that you get it in the right place. I click a connector point on there and then I one onto this side. Just click that on. That one didn't look like it went on. I'll just see if that's there. I move this out of the way it's probably sitting underneath no it's not there at all so connect a point control key that little cross click there it is the control key that little cross click and then I should now be able to connect these up so I go from one to the other that connects in there ignore that and then let's go from the other one to connect into there like that put the pointer tool back on uh, I don't want that line on there so line arrows just want a straightforward line same with that one line arrows no arrow and then this line I don't want it like this either so this is probably because of where this is sitting so I'm not liking that that's not connected 
so there's no connect it hasn't picked up a connector tool on there so I'll just put it on again it's not it's put it there but it's not actually stuck to this box now it is point of tool so if I go pick this up onto the connector point there we go then I can push this out can I still is still stuck to it you've got to be quite it is quite finicky that um, just pull that down a little bit now they're lined up and then what I did was I just grouped these like that and then they became a level one so if I click on group group and I pulled them into there and you end up with that without any information on so then I've done the same sort of thing with level two so if I just click off this now I haven't typed any information in the shape data which I should do I will do so I'll just put um, Ken Saxton in there date of birth is the 12th of October 1935 and his death was the 20th of April 2011 and then same for Dorothy Greenwood so Dorothy Greenwood oops don't happen there Dorothy Greenwood date of birth was the 14th of the 10th 1935 she's not dead and then I was born on 21st of August 1957 wrong place Stephen Saxton 21st of August 1957 and I'm not dead so if I click on this I should be able to move all these as a group so I've grouped them so they're one thing uh, before I typed all of that information I would pull it into this to create this level one block that I've already got and the shape data I've added a bit extra shape data in this one so I'll just delete this one off now then you have to create the next level so level two I've already created level two would work the same way now I haven't got a connector point on this end so I need to put connector point on this end so basically you should do this before you pull these into your your own stencil and then you won't have to worry about this so now that should bang into that it's not liking that it's pulling out so it's the connector points that are not sitting on there let's just try that again I probably should have done this before you see it's sitting over there before it's um, grouped so it looks like it's on let's just try it again they both look like they're on yeah it's not, it's not there's no connector tool on there anyhow it doesn't matter for this so put your connector tools on before you group them and then you set the the scene like this and obviously you have to make them smaller and smaller so level three would sit like that and so on and so on now if I just delete this off and just try and do that with the one I did earlier so it's the same size so I'll just bring that down now you can see straight away the problem you're going to have here with these boxes being this size is because you are going to get everything banging in together so you need to work out best what the best size of these boxes are and the information that you can display so maybe you want it just um, that sort of information and don't have any just have um, so who's this going to be this is going to be John Saxton just have the name in there because you can put all the other details in the in the shape data so John Saxton and then it would be um, 
Agnes Negan, like so. So that's where you put Agnes. In fact, I'm the, that's the grandparents. I can't even remember their own family tree. It doesn't matter. Uh, but that's where you'd put their date of birth. You would put um, Agnes Megan, and that's it. That's his grandmother. So I'll put her birth it was 1864, and then she is actually dead. John Saxton, 1862, and so on. And then you you do your little connection points on these both ends. Um, I can't remember if I actually did connection points on this or not. If I quick look, no. So I needed to put connection points on this end, so I can see where these are going to join. Didn't think I got that on there. No, I did. So all this should get done before you put them onto your stencil. So you've got like a connection point. I know this is a bit of a longer way around of doing it, guys, but the frustration is editing the shape data because um, the fact that it's remembering the default shape data is the issue. The previous versions, it didn't remember that. Once you deleted it, that was it. It just put it into your stencil, then you could pull it on and then it would remember it. So if that's if yours works fine, that's great. You don't have to do this. You can use the preset format shapes, these ones, and just play around with the lines to get them to fit properly. Otherwise, you're doing this. Now, the um, shape reports feature will not pick up these additional fields. So um, if I create a new report, all shapes on this page here, now, these are the fields, so I only want these three fields. And then go next, call it Steve, and then next, call it Steve again, and then finish. And I'm going to run that, and it'll ask me if I want to do it in Excel or these other options, and then I'm going to click OK to that, and should drop it into Excel. There won't be much information on it, but you should you should see the the idea. There you go. So all that data you're going to have into an Excel file. Now that's all I want to cover on this little bit. I'm actually doing my family tree at the moment, and I've gone back to 1695, so I'm quite excited by that. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for your time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.